if executing at your job and providing an outstanding customer service experience gives you a nice warm fuzzy feeling on the inside I would assert that your excellence in service contributes to your wellness I would double assert that your wellness contributes to your excellent service and that's what we're talking about today on wellness time Just taking a step back and, and putting yourself in the patient's shoes. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a huge part of it. No matter how little or big I might perceive that to be, as a patient, it's a pretty big deal. Um, again, how do you want to get treated? How do you want to um, mm -hmm. be addressed? How do you want to be heard? Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of comes into play. Is you make a decision every day when you get up the type of person you're going to be, the type of um, um, nurse you're going to be, the type of person in general you're going to be, and mm -hmm. how you have the ability to change your mood for the better. Mm -hmm. um, it can be a really bad day and a lot of really bad stuff happening. And if you um, change that mindset to this is going to be good and I'm going to, regardless of how many bad things get thrown at you, mm -hmm. um, you have the ability to kind of um, look at the brighter side of things mm -hmm. and, and try to change things for the better. Howdy there wellness companions. This is AJ Webb, your SLV Health Wellness Coordinator. And the clips you just saw were a conversation that I had with the great and powerful Julie Ramstetter, who is a 22-year veteran of SLV Health and the Trauma Nurse Coordinator. We were coming over from a Service Excellence Advisory Committee meeting where that group works to impart and improve upon a culture of service excellence here at San Luis Valley Health. I had the pleasure to work with Julie during the service excellence advisory, well the service excellence presentations that we did for all the staff here at SLV Health from March to April. And I learned a lot about her. I learned a lot about how her mindset has changed over time, about how important it is to not only dot your I's and cross your T's and do your job, but to provide excellent service with compassion, listen to patients, and all these different things that go into a high quality patient experience. So I sat down with her, I asked her some questions, I asked her to tell me some stories, and I hope that by listening to this, it'll inspire you to create a wow experience to take your service to the next level. I know you will enjoy this episode with Julie Ramstetter. Wellness Time is brought to you by the San Luis Valley Health Wellness Program. If you find this video valuable, Please support by liking, subscribing, sharing it with your friends, leaving some comments. And if you want to follow on a day-to-day -day basis, check us out on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks in advance for your support. Julie Rampsetter, thank you for coming into, this is like the first uh, first recording with this gear, so hopefully everything's going to go, go good. There's a saying in the Navy SEALs that two is one and one is none. And we're, 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 we're rolling the dice because there's no backup on this one. So this could end up being a dress rehearsal, but it seems everything's going pretty good. You hear the echoey kind of acoustics in here. I don't know how Keep our fingers crossed. It's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, Julie, so we just came from a service excellence advisor meeting yep. and we got to talk about the workshops that we've been doing. We got to talk about some, a variety of different topics, but let's start by hearing um, some more about you. So can you tell me your name, your title, how long you worked here, any credentials that you have? Tell us about you, Julie. All right. So let's start off. I, uh, my name is Julie Ramstetter. I've been, um, I'm a registered nurse and I currently work as the trauma nurse coordinator for our trauma program. And I've been in that position for about the last, um, six years. And I've been with the facility for just over 22 years. And um, I started off in a med surge unit and worked my way up to um, ICU, did a little bit of OB in there um, 
kind of covering and then the rest the majority of my experience has been in the emergency department and um, I've played um, some interim roles as um, director in um, the emergency department and also in OB. So. Have you have you done any other outpatient stuff? Um, or like what percent of the time have you been doing emergency, acute, rapid fire kind of work? So probably about 16 years of my, uh, uh -huh. probably a good majority of it, uh, probably 15, 16 years have been primarily in, in emergency. And would you say that like it fits your personality type and your preferences? Um, yeah, I kind of like the excitement of it. And, you know, it's just, um, you know, you're there at someone's worst moment and it could also be their best moment as mm -hmm. well. So, you know, the life saving in someone's time of need is mm -hmm. always kind of satisfying for me. Ooh. Yeah, because if I had to, you know, use some in our limited time working together, I would say like intensity might be a good adjective to describe you. And <laughs> um, I, I like my gig as a wellness. I'm kind of laid back, slow. It's important. Give it time. And that's, I don't think my personality type would do real well in a sustainable way in kind of an acute care. So bless you folks that have the ability to go into the the darkest days of people and have those really intense situations. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm interested to hear more about like personality fits and stuff like that because there's a lot of different places and a lot of different personality types and a lot of, there's a lot of different places in healthcare that individuals can, uh, can work in, huh? I think that's the joy about healthcare is that you, you know, you can find what your niche is and, and, you know, probably, 10 years ago, I would have never seen myself sitting at a desk, crunching numbers and doing um, do it projects and PDSAs mm -hmm. um, to try and find ways of how we can improve our trauma program. And, and I, you would have never guessed that I was that person um, looking back. And now, mm -hmm. you know, that's something that I, I, I find my passion moving towards that way. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite the, the floor nurse that I was. 10 years ago and and um, I still like the adrenaline rush of being able to take care of certain things mm -hmm. but um, lifestyle I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a little bit more laid back and so mm -hmm. uh, maybe that's just my age adrenaline but. rush in small <laughs> doses or, yeah. or, or, or yeah. different degree yeah um, are you uh, so, so tell me how you got started in healthcare or are you the only healthcare worker in your family? What does it look like? Um, in my immediate family, yes. And uh -huh. then I have, a, um, since then, I've had multiple cousins um, that are also in nursing. I have my daughter is in nursing. Mm -hmm. um, I have um, uncles and cousins that are also doing radiology tech. And so um, physical therapy, uh, just kind of a wide variety of things um, within our family. And that kind of started not long after I got in and mm -hmm. we all kind of just started venturing towards the health care you're side. The, you're the pace setter. You're the, hey, hey, check this out over here. This is pretty neat. Yeah, it's it, it, it was, um, I don't, I don't even know. I think growing up, it was one of those things like, oh, I think it would be kind of cool to be a nurse. And so mm -hmm. um, I started off um, as a um, LPN. I went to the Alamosa Vocational School. It was still a vocational school mm -hmm. um, years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And then um, I turned around and went quickly into the um, associate's degree program for RNs and I got into that. And And then right as soon as I was done with that, um, well, in between that, as an, I was as I was an LPN, I w started working. It was my first job up on the med surge unit. And back then they used to hire LPNs on a med surge unit. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to work and get some experience and then continue to go to school for my um, RN. And then I finished that a year later and, and got kicked me into to doing nursing. And it wasn't until probably about 10 plus years after that, that I decided to go back in and, and get my bachelor's degree. And, okay. and, and so since then I've had it a couple of different alphabet suit behind my name, but um, <laughs> the majority of it's been um, those first couple of years. Of I got you. So a, a, a semi vague thought, of, Oh, that might be a pretty cool thing to vocational school to associates degree. And now people in your family are following you into the healthcare industry. Yeah. yeah bravo. <laughs> Good fun. job. Yeah. What, um, so that's, that's, a, that's a lot of career to talk about. And I'm, I'm interested to hear at what point, if at any point did you really figure out that healthcare was 
not just this good idea that you might have when you're younger, but this is this is my place. This is this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. Um, I think a lot of it was, you know, as I as I kind of figured out that I was a night person and I and I moved from working day shift because I wasn't in a very good day shift person. And mm -hmm. then I moved into night and how much I really enjoyed what I was doing and mm -hmm. just kind of a self uh, a little satisfaction of seeing people go home and, um, you know, seeing their progress as they improved and knowing that I had something to do with that mm -hmm. and, and, and recognizing that, that I was able to make a difference in their lives to be able to get them back home mm -hmm. or at least get them to, you know, out of the hospital and maybe it was a nursing home, but at least they were, they were, they were alive and they were, they were doing well at that point. Mm -hmm. So you get this real satisfying feeling of seeing the folks go home, being a part of a system that takes, um, that takes care of them. What has your employee experience been like here at SLV Health? Because the way I understand it, because I've only been here, I'll be, it'll be three years this fall. So I'm just a little baby child in regards to my tenure here. But uh, things always haven't been the way that they are today. And we'll just, we'll pause that with today. We just came from a group of folks that are dedicated towards service, organizational improvement. We're in a, a good place that we can kind of elaborate on. But what, um, what has been your employee experience and how has it changed over over your career i absolutely you're correct with that is you know when when i first came on board you know it was a little bit about service but that wasn't really what healthcare was about i mm -hmm. felt like i think it was like you know we're here to do a job and you know we get our job done and and move on to the next mm -hmm. one and, it, and they didn't really stress the importance of customer service or um, or care in that portion. It was just getting getting the job done, um, crossing your T's and dotting your I's, and mm -hmm. and move on to the next person. And so, mm -hmm. um, and and through the years, it really was kind of um, it was a little disheartening because it also gave me a bad attitude about certain things. So mm -hmm. as as you know, things came up and and um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Situations would come up. And I would slowly find myself becoming a naysayer mm. in, you know, um, in the type of person that I was, the type of nurse that I was. So when they wanted me to do this or that or whatever it may be, I was like, well, what are they going to do? Are they going to fire me? What's going to happen? Has this they just turned me. into a confession here <laughs> of uh, a former bad attitude haver? Oh, yeah. I was the complete, <laughs> I was the complete, like, poster child for uh -huh. for poor employees right. probably. And because I honestly was, I, I was, I had the attitude that they needed me more than I needed them. And uh -huh. regardless of, you know, where I thought I could get a job in. And, and, and back then it was probably a little bit true. They did have somewhat of a, nor a nursing shortage. Um, so I, I played that and, you mm -hmm. know, and I didn't do anything to kind of help the cause. And mm -hmm. so it's probably a pretty natural progression though. Let me bail you out real quick. If, if you're feeling any shame or guilt about <laughs> bad attitudeness. Um, I, I think that when we enter a workforce, or at least this is my experience, maybe it parallels yours, we're there and it's time to save the universe and, you know, all these possibilities and things like that. And there's also some necessity, more responsibilities and, you know, paying off stuff and things like that. But then, man, you've been here, you know, you've been in a situation, it's been five years, you've been mistreated by a supervisor, or maybe you mistreated by customers or patients or something like that and you start to enter uh, a, a cynical some little bit of burnout going on like a it's really hard work healthcare is very difficult and i assert that your line the acute line is very difficult and then when you have those different things that occur that can really foster a little bit of bitterness a little bit of resentment a little bit of dissatisfaction and am i, am I doing a good job bailing you out so oh, far yeah yeah <laughs> and you know it was easy because we came you know where financially the hospital wasn't doing uh, great at a point and mm -hmm. so you know we'd get the news that hey guess what you know 
a handful of you are going to be, you know, let go or laid off and, mm-hmm. and you, your lucky number might be pulled. Right. Um, we'd also have periods where nobody was getting raises, um, right. performance, um, evaluations mm-hmm. or anything like that. And we did periods where, you know, two, three years in a row where we wouldn't get, um, mm-hmm. raises. And so it was really kind of tough to kind of stick things out. And, mm-hmm. and, and then at that point you're like, do I, make the decision to up and move my family elsewhere? Mm-hmm. Do I stop what I'm doing um, to go choose a different career path? Mm-hmm. What do I do? And um, and a lot of it took some some digging deep and, and yes, I still have to pay the bills and yes, I still have to provide for my family, but also why did I get into this job in the first place? Mm-hmm. And you know, what was my passion? And, and, um, and I had to go back and think about it like my job was my thoughts were is this is not why I didn't choose to do this job for the money and I really Mm -hmm. wanted to fulfill my passion and and do what's good for me Mm -hmm. um for myself awesome yeah Uh, again like I I, I, I can echo that in some of my things like oh this is I, I enjoy this and I'd be kind of doing something similar if it was just my free time I need to have money coming in to pay the bills and things like that but this is this this is my home this is this is where i belong so there's some some just some thinking some paradigm shifts that go on there right now maybe it's chicken egg kind of a situation but when did you see the the hospital the 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 medical system here start to turn around and when did your your own thinking start to change like, um, what, what does that look like? You know, a couple of different situations with my own, with my own thinking, I had a not so good experience. Um, you know, I had a, um, patient who I had a patient complaint about me and, um, and I was like, you know, whatever. And there's no way, you know, I do my job and I do it well. Mm-hmm. And, and I was pretty arrogant about how well I did my job and, and, you know, I took excellent care of them. And, and when I listened to the the, the patient complaint and, and I, I was, you know, complete denial that it was even occurring or that they, you know, they had no reason to complain. Mm-hmm. And, and then I went back and I went home that night and, and I couldn't sleep and it bothered me mm-hmm. and it bothered me because it was true. Mm-hmm. Um, I went back and I just thought about the care of that patient on that night and, and I kept thinking about it and I was like, they're right. They're absolutely right. And I downplayed a situation that I probably shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. And, um, I felt like I dismissed the patient and his wife. Um, and, and I probably, I almost missed a, a situation that could have turned into a bad deal for him. Mm-hmm. And, um, when all it would have done was taken a few minutes out of my time to sit down and be a better listener, um, sit down and, and give a little bit more, a little bit of compassion. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and that was kind of my turning point, um, for myself, mm-hmm. um, with my administrative teams, I would say probably, um, since our new administrative team came through and, you know, not, not trying to brown nose or Let's anything. Let's get those but... <laughs> points right now. Let's get those points out there. But, this is going to be on the but internet, in... <laughs> everyone. Yeah. Um, but in all honesty, uh-huh. it was a, a big turning point because I don't feel before that, that customer service was even a thought or, mm. you know, it's kind of like, well, give them what they need. And, and then when they complain after we'll kind of deal with it as it comes along. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I don't feel like that's the way things are now. I think mm-hmm. that we have a, um, team that is, um, invested in our, um, personal growth. Mm-hmm. We have a team that's invested in our community. These are our friends and our family members that we take mm-hmm. care of. Um, it's a reflection of who we are as a person and who we represent. Mm-hmm. And so, um, again, I feel like this group has been the, my favorite mm-hmm. so far mm-hmm. and who I feel like is most invested in, in who we are as a facility and, mm-hmm. and, and, um, and how we represent our community. Absolutely. Um, because let's imagine a situation where you have this paradigm shift. You know, you, you're up at night and you go, never again, bad service, Julie, or uncompassionate, <laughs> Julie, right? And, and But then you go back into a system that 
doesn't reward good service that doesn't make it a priority it almost seems like oh that's setting you up for a nice little you know right back into the valley at some point but we have a fortunate situation where service becomes a priority around here right um it it becomes something that's important and becomes something that this this organization and and this leadership team invests in right um and that's a that's a a mindset and a person's own desire that lines up with some structures and systems that are dedicated towards not only doing our job, making sure that people get what they need, you know, mm-hmm. but but also that they have a good experience while while it happens. My my experience coming over to SLV Health was I was just very impressed by the thoroughness of onboarding, the amount of orientation, obviously the wellness program component, that's a really cool thing. Great. Like I'm just flabbergasted at that sometimes and so are other people that I talk to that work at other organizations and um, it's just it's obvious that investing in employee health wellness tools to be successful tools tools and systems to provide good service are, are things that are important to such a degree it's like an obvious walk in the walk that sound that not, sounds that sounds completely fair you think of the the situations it's not about um you know what's good for patients but it's how do we keep our employees happy how do we keep our employees engaged how mm-hmm. do we how do we allow for personal growth and mm-hmm. you know and and i think that this has been um this is this time in my career it's it's a nice fresh breath of air mm-hmm. um to be able to be here and be part of that and experience mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And I've also been very encouraged by, because you and I, were blessed. We're in positions that you really enjoy, you're engaged in, you're interested in what you're doing, me too. But it's not all peaches, rainbows, and the pickup sticks through the bubblegum no. forest around <laughs> here. There are hard jobs. Right. There are hard jobs that may not get the appreciation or shine, or they're really busy dealing with all the back end stuff. Like I could imagine if I had to deal with all the patient complaints and stuff. Like I'm fortunate that I don't have to do that. So I know it's not all, um, you know, sh- everything's in, 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 in sugar plum land or anything like that. But I think that people have an opportunity to advance, move around, and there's also opportunities to make changes to those pain points of our jobs. And I can't say that across the board, but how would you, how would you agree with that? Would, I you, think, would you agree with that? You know, I think I agree with that. And I think one of the biggest biggest things that I try to stress is is you make a decision every day when you get up, the type of person you're going to be, the type of um, um, nurse you're going to be, the type of person in general you're going to be and Mm -hmm. how you have the ability to change your mood for the better Mm -hmm. Um, it can be a really bad day and a lot of really bad stuff happening and if you um change that mindset to this is going to be good and i'm going to regardless of how many bad things get thrown at you Mm -hmm. um you have the ability to kind of um look at the brighter side of things Mm -hmm. and and try to change things for the better yeah so that's a big element there where we're encouraged to have our own personal responsibility but we also got a tool bag full of stuff that we can change like our own environment and i think that's one thing that i've been impressed with with our leadership is like just this idea when i came in like that an oasis team where like staff's gonna pick what we're gonna do like that was a really cool thing and to you know be a part of those things i was a part of the employee assistance program and the helping hands committee and just being a part of a process where you're not telling people you're making a suggestion leadership listens then it gets you know then it gets promoted based off of those recommendations and i think that that's that's awesome so we all have our personal responsibility to to make our choices to have a good day or a bad day but then we also work in a place where we don't have to rely completely on our own ability to make it a good day or a bad day there's there's systems there's tools and it's supported as a part of of how we do business here correct Absolutely. Well said. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. 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 These are just my observations that, uh, and, and again, they're, you know, get my brown nose and points in here, but these are just things that I, that I appreciate. One of those things that people have an opportunity to do are, are do it projects. And we just got done talking about these over at our service excellent advisor meeting. Right. Um, can you tell us, you know, I didn't prime you for this, but can you tell us about a, a particular do it project that you thought went well or 
Is there hot tips that you have for someone that's thinking about doing a do it project? I think that you kind of have to open up your mind a little bit when it comes to doing a, doing a do it project and um, a lot, you can make them as complicated or as simple as you would want them to be. And, and a lot of times we just have to, you know, stop and take a look and think about simplicity and, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm frustrated with X, Y, and Z in my job, or this didn't turn out as how I would like this to be. How can I make that better? Mm -hmm. And everybody has that opportunity to find something in their day that could be better. Mm -hmm. And so that's where a do a project comes in. Maybe it's something that wasn't explained and, and, and you're wondering if you're the only person in that same boat that, that um, didn't understand it. So how do I get the word out to everybody to make sure that they understand it as well? Mm -hmm. Those are simple things that you can think of when it comes to doing a do a project. Mm -hmm. Mine can get a little bit more complicated. Mm -hmm. We look at, you know, hey, here's a, you know, we have our hip patients and, mm -hmm. and our standard is, is we want to get anybody that falls and has a broken hip. We want to get them into the emergency or into the operating room, um, within a certain time period. How do mm -hmm. we do that? Well, let's go back and break down this system. And, and so long story short with lots of meetings and sending people to their hospitals to get specialized training, mm -hmm. we were able to take our, um, our time to the OR from from 50 some hours down to eight hours. Mm -hmm. And so again, that just improved the patient's care. Um, I'd rather I'd rather be sitting in pain for eight right. hours rather than 50 hours. Right. Hands and, down every day. Right. Of the week. <laughs> So, it, you know, those are some of the things that we look at mm -hmm. from my trauma world mm -hmm. and how we can do, how we strive to make things better for mm -hmm. our patients. Oh, definitely. Well, and, and even on a population health level, that kind of segues us into um, our, our our falls work that we've been doing, what we've been working on together, right? So, right. You're, you know, part of your responsibility as... Uh, in, in your role is to okay we this is something that happens a lot this is you know no pun intended but a pain point right, right? I right. mean it could just be as easily as like people are running out of pens but it just so happens to be like people are being admitted for falls what do we need to do let's go out in the community let's teach people about what we can do to avoid this situation it's a right. real project and it's in its own self because you got some information you have uh, you know some good reason to go and do it and um, there we go. Another example of a of a, of of a do, do it project, project. and yeah. we didn't even know we we did a right, do it project. Right. So, <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit more about service excellence. And I'll tell you that I had, I had a lot of fun. Um, I, had, I had a lot of fun being part of your group. You got to be That's like the, you got to be the fearless leader for us because um, I was I was pretty intimidated. Like I'm. I'm I'm not fearless when it comes to like getting up in front of people and, and, and talking and stuff like that. Like I am pretty scared, but I'll do it. Like if that's my talent, like I'll just go up there and look silly. But to have you a veteran of the healthcare system to be able to guide us through, share your stories, um, that was super helpful. But let's just freestyle. We, we talked about a, a variety of different topics in our, our trainings this year, but let's just talk about the logistics of those. We got, we spent a lot of time getting ready for that. Yeah, it takes, it's a little bit more nerve wracking than they think. And so unless you're like yourself or you're doing some public um, speaking and education and you're mm -hmm. in front of a camera and in front of crowds and you're not quite so intimidated by it. I do a lot of teaching um, with nurses and in the public and um, outreach and education. And so I'm not quite so mm -hmm. uncomfortable with it. But when you're um, some of our partners that come in and they've never done any public speaking before mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like, hey, here's all this material and I want you to go out in front of your peers mm -hmm. and talk about why this is important to you. And, and so it can be a little unnerving for them and um, takes a lot of preparation and a lot of practice and, um, and just a lot of guts to get up in front mm -hmm. of your peers to be able to speak to something that may not always be um, so receptive in mm -hmm. other people's eyes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that a little bit because we got to do our skit with the service excellence fairy. And, you know, we kind of already hashed through this, but it, it's an easy thing, you know, because we're working to sing the praises of the thing and sing the praises of the, of the leadership for making it a priority because we appreciate it. But it's something that's easy to be cynical about. 
It's something that's easy to have a bad attitude. Like, oh, there's that class thing we got to go to again, you know, and it's just this one thing during the year and then we forget about it, which isn't true. I mean, as far as the amount of resources, the amount of time that goes in the preparation of these things, how important they are to, you know, remember some of these things. Um, let's talk about what would you want to tell someone that might have a, a, a cynical, jaded, negative attitude about service excellence and what it's really all about. I think it's really easy to get in routine. And I think it's really easy to talk yourself out of doing what's right from on day to day things, cut mm -hmm. corners, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Um, again, I think a lot of it goes back to, to a little self-reflection and mm -hmm. who are you as a person and who do you want to be? Mm -hmm. Um, known as and then um, what type of worker you want to be um, what type of person do people perceive you as mm -hmm. and also um, kind of just taking a step back in and putting yourself in the patient's shoes um, mm -hmm. I think that's a huge part of it I you know having been a patient myself recently um, gives you a nice gentle reminder of you know what you want to be like and what you don't want to be like mm -hmm. and and again um, just you know, sometimes hearing some um, horrible news and also hearing some really good news and also um, hearing some teaching that you, you think you probably heard a, a thousand times and you're going to hear it a thousand and one. Mm -hmm. um, again, just putting yourself in those shoes and reminding mm -hmm. yourself um, what it, what it's like to be in on yeah. the other side of things getting that perspective so my son just got tubes put in his ears and you know it's it's we can minimize it right now but it was a big deal for my family it's something that's right. you know kind of scary and i have you know the utmost confidence in dr ellison and that team but it's still like oh man like here i am sitting in this waiting room 10 weeks ago i thought it was silly that they were thinking about putting or they or, or I, I thought the idea of like where you like like a pizza like right we're breaking it we're putting the stuff on it you know like, I, I thought the idea of that for people was ridiculous and now i'm in there going oh man uh you know wh wh what's going on right and just lo looking at those things it just gives it gives such a different perspective right to be dad waiting on a son who's in the operating room for his little procedure whatever it was um just continues to reopen our eyes so that practice of what is it like to be the patient where we can take a break and get out of that routine for a second and think what are they going through right now just to just to just to have that different perspective on things and no matter how little or big i might perceive that to be as a patient it's a pretty big deal and so one of uh my my supervisor monica told me it's like as simple as it's still your deal it's still your your stuff my mm -hmm. stuff may not seem so big compared to the grand scheme of things of what mm -hmm. others may go through but it's still my stuff and so mm -hmm. yeah you have to kind of take a step back and and uh, think about we've all been had our blood drawn we've all been in situations in the clinic um again how do you want to get treated how do you want to um mm -hmm be addressed how do you want to be heard mm -hmm. um all that kind of comes into play mm -hmm. uh when you take that into perspective yeah, and it goes both ways because not only are we you know is it good practice for us to put ourselves in the patient's shoes that doesn't mean that we're chopped liver all of a sudden no i mean we're still important we still have important jobs to do that are hard and we still have stuff that's going on and if we can work to be a little bit mindful of our own moods and attitudes, we can uh, get the things that we need for ourselves. Like, you know, it's okay to tag someone in every once in a while, hey, I need a break or, or whatever, whatever this. I know that's not universal across all positions, but, um, or, or at least getting some, some support. And that's kind of where my wellness part comes in, right? Is, is, is my wellness isn't all kale salads and, and jogging and stuff like that. <laughs> There's a big emotional intelligence component to, uh, and a self-care component where we're at, at any given time it's good for us to know what we need when we need it and how to go get it i think um, taking taking personal time and mm -hmm. being able to recognize 
um, that you have to have some sort of outlet, whether mm -hmm. that's going for a walk or a hike or a jog or mm -hmm. some sort of exercise. Maybe it's doing a puzzle at home. Whatever mm -hmm. that may be right. is having some sort Organizing of Organizing wrestling time. tournaments yeah. and side hustle <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's Having it's some time yeah. away from your job and mm -hmm. taking time for you and, and, um, and having some sort of way to break away from the day in, day out routine of things and, and, and mm -hmm. give yourself time to allow for some reflection, personal reflection. And, mm -hmm. and, um, how do I, how do I make tomorrow a better day mm -hmm. situation? And well, so. yeah. And you know, as I look at service excellence and I also look at the things that I'm responsible for promoting health and wellness throughout our staff is they have a really strong possibility of a very symbiotic type of relationship, you know, right. where the better I'm doing, taking care of myself, the better service I'm doing, the better service, the more I feel like accomplished and I get some of those satisfying things. And I at least work to avoid that, that heartache of a negative review. And those right. still are going to be happening, but there's also a resiliency component to that where right. I can go, oh, they had bad stuff to say about me. I honestly did the best that I could. It doesn't mean I like what happened, but it was the best I could. And that's what I got. And I'll make changes, but I don't have to go home and now I'm going to go home and kick my dog and take it out of my kids and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't want to go through that. Mm -hmm. so. Um, Julie, um, real quick, what are, what are, what are your favorite things to do for your own, for your own self care? Um, probably one of uh, there's a variety of things. Um, okay. put on a great big tournaments on um, wrestling mm -hmm. tournaments and hold, um, crazy chaotic um, wrestling camps. That's mm -hmm. one of my. You do some um, exercise, <laughs> I understand. I do, I do. Mm -hmm. I, I got into this little CrossFit phase. I mm -hmm. think you had something to do with mm -hmm. that and Dr. Trippy. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that's done well for me. And mm -hmm. and then, you know, I kind of do a variety of things. There's sometimes uh, on my days I sit home and I do puzzles. And mm -hmm. there's some days I get go with my daughter and do a Zumba class or, or go roller skate. Mm -hmm. And, um, some days I go out with my boys and go golf. So mm -hmm. it just is a variety of things. My favorite thing to do is I go for walks with my husband and that's probably one of my favorite things to oh, do. Very nice. Well, um, I know you're super busy. You have big responsibilities, but I appreciate how you take the time to be a part of service excellence, to make this a better place to work, to make our service for our patients better overall so they have better experiences they get better outcomes and i appreciate you taking the time to talk with me about service why it's important to you and sharing with us your stories about how your mind's changed over time and some of the some of the differences you've seen in the organization i think we work for a special place and there's special employees like yourself so thanks for telling us that story thanks i i, I guess there's a reason that i've been here 22 years mm -hmm. and and i enjoy the people i work with they're my family and I enjoy um, my, my team that I work with, and mm -hmm. um, they've just, it's been a pleasure to work here, and um, I really enjoy my service team um, that I work with because it gives us opportunity to go out and hopefully talk people into experiencing the same thing that, that we get to experience um, in our role. I'll ask you to metaphorically drop the mic right there. Don't drop the mic for reals because they're expensive, but Julie, thank you. Thanks. So much. <laughs> So we're going hot, and let's do this. Go ahead and set your microphone down real quick, Julie. One, two, where? I'm going to go this time, and then you go. We'll do it on three. One, two, three. There we go. That, that no. <laughs> no. He wasn't ready. He wasn't ready.